What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Tidal Gardens. If you're new to the channel, Tidal Gardens is a coral farm located in Copley, Ohio, and we cover reef aquarium topics such as coral spotlights, tank setups, as well as monthly live shows where we chat it up with you guys. In this video over here, I talk about my top choices for a sandy substrate. If you haven't seen that video, I'll be sure to link it in the description so you can check that out. This video, however, is all about corals that are great bottom dwellers for a tank with no substrate at all, aka a bare bottom tank. As I said in that other video, one could technically put any coral on the bottom of a tank and make it work to some degree. It's not always a good idea to do so, and here we're going to cover why some corals make better bare bottom candidates than others. All right, let's hop right into the list and I'll cover my thought process as we go. I'm going to start with a couple of honorable mentions that didn't quite make the cut for one reason or another. The first honorable mention are mushroom coralomorphs. Now, I love the way that mushrooms look, especially when they're in large colonies that pretty much cover the bottom. There are a couple of reasons why they didn't quite make this list, though. While I think that they look great towards the bottom of the tank, I don't think that they are great candidates for growing right on the glass bottom. They have a way of collecting detritus right underneath their umbrella shape, and in general, they tend to do better on the rock work. The usual way of dealing with that detritus buildup is to increase the flow. But that brings me to the second downside to mushrooms, is that they can't really handle the kind of flow necessary to keep that detritus in suspension. Intense flow like that will cause the mushrooms to peel back and blow away, which is one sure way to kill them. So that's my first honorable mention, mushrooms. The second honorable mention are zoas and paleothoa. Just like mushrooms, these corals look amazing on the bottom of the tank. There are seemingly infinite colors and patterns, and overall I'd say that they do well growing on the glass. My only reservation is with the zoanthids in particular, because they can tend to trap detritus in their mat base. Paleothoa don't care quite so much, but if zoanthids trap too much, what tends to happen is that part of the mat dies back. The good news though, is that zoanthids can take a good amount of flow, and theoretically can be kept clean, but it's up to the hobbyist to actually provide that level of flow. Still, this combo can make for a very striking display on the bottom of a tank, which is why it lands here as an honorable mention. Just talking about these two honorable mentions, you can get a common theme. Water flow for a bare bottom tank is a major consideration in the design of the tank. Now, bare bottom tanks appeal to reef hobbyists that either like their tanks laboratory clean or are employing heavy duty water flow in their tanks, such that a substrate would pretty much end up being a sandstorm in the aquarium. In both situations, hobbyists like to try to keep the bottom of their tank clear either by using a lot of flow to keep the detritus in suspension, or having it settle in the sump or a filter sock, or they use slightly less flow but play around with the direction of the flow to create a dead spot in the aquarium where the detritus is going to settle out, and then periodically siphon that pile of detritus. With that in mind, one of the most important criteria is that the corals can handle a little bit of flow. Some corals, especially fleshy brain corals, don't really appreciate this kind of flow at the bottom of the tank. For example, when I give a coral like Lobophilia too much flow, the side that's getting hit by that flow pretty much pulls in way tight to the point that the skeleton starts to poke through and it just starts to rip the polyp apart. It really shouldn't need to be said, but peeling the flesh off of a coral is not something you want to be doing. Secondly, I would avoid corals that could potentially get blown around the tank because they have a skeleton that resembles a hockey puck. An example of this is a homophilia or scolemia. 
on one hand, you want corals to stay where you place them for aesthetic reasons, but more importantly, you want to avoid potentially deadly interactions between corals if one of these hockey puck corals was sent drifting into a nearby colony. So, long story short, all of these corals on the list need to be able to handle a bit of flow. So let's hop right into the top five. The number five coral on this list is one that you may not have expected. Bird's nest. But in particular, the bird of paradise color morph or the yellow slash green bird's nest color morph. I have to put that distinction out there because these varieties do better in medium to low light while the pink colored bird's nests appreciate higher light levels to maintain that bright flamingo pink, hot pink appearance. This affinity for lower light makes these bird's nests great candidates to have on the bottom of the tank to bring that branching coral aesthetic of corals such as Acropora or Montipora to the lower levels in the aquascape. Bird's nests like plenty of flow but being located on the bottom of the tank does make them susceptible to sliding a bit if they're not properly weighted down. Now this can be solved pretty easily by either gluing it down to a piece of rock or just propping it against a rock and having the coral quickly grow onto it. Bird's nests are an incredibly fast growing coral and they're gonna grow onto a new substrate pretty quickly if given the chance. All right, moving on. Taking the number four spot on the list is Cyphastria, which I lovingly refer to as the Prince of Darkness. Of all of the photosynthetic corals out there, this is my number one choice for the one that does well with the least amount of light. This is a common theme with both Cyphastria and bird's nests that we just talked about. The corals on this list have to be able to thrive in modest lighting intensities. Corals towards the bottom of the tank don't get as much light as corals towards the top of the tank. That's pretty well known. But the drop-off is not linear. When you move a coral further away from a light source, the intensity is divided by the square of the distance. So if you move twice as far away from a light source, you're not getting half the light. You're getting only a quarter of the light. This is referred to as the inverse square law. So corals at the bottom of the tank are only getting a tiny, tiny fraction of the light intensity at the top of the aquarium. And this is ignoring other factors, such as the cloudiness of the water or shading from things like rock overhangs. Despite all this, Cyphastia grow great right on the bottom surface of the aquarium and manage to maintain good coral coloration. Like all the previous corals on the list, this stony coral benefits from a good amount of flow to help prevent detritus from settling on it. The number three coral on this list is Ganiopora and Alveopora. These large polyp stony corals are commonly referred to as flower pot corals and differ from each other by the number of tentacles they have on each stalk. This may be a curious addition to this list because they're just good across the board when looking at the criteria that we've laid out so far. There isn't really one area that they stand out from the pack. The flower pot corals can be placed on the rockwork as well as on the bottom of the aquarium. We've done both, and I'm really not sure if they have a preference one way or another. They do collect a bit of detritus at their base, so when keeping them on a bare bottom tank, um, expect that, but they don't really seem to mind it so much. Also, despite their delicate appearance, and they're really, really sensitive to contact, they can tolerate a decent bit of flow. We hit them with quite a lot in our tanks, and they seem to like it. Now, super strong flow may not be ideal for them, but even in those cases, it doesn't seem to be a problem. I have them about four inches away from a large gyre pump, and they've been growing happily there for over a year. Lastly, when it comes to light intensity. They're neither super light loving, nor are they the best choice for a super dark part of the tank. But what I've noticed is that their growth and appearance are pretty consistent regardless of the type of lighting provided. So that was the number three corals, Alveopora and Ganiopora. The number two coral for bare bottom tanks 
is Green Star Polyps. This is a great beginner soft coral, and it's also a wonderful candidate for a bare bottom tank. It's basically grass. If you ever wanted that manicured lawn look that you see in freshwater planted aquariums, this coral is for you. It forms a purple mat from which the bright green fluorescent polyps extend. Green star polyps are a fast growing coral and loves flow. In fact, we recommend providing with a ton of flow, even if you have no intention of growing a thick mat down on the bottom glass. And the reason is that purple mat, for whatever reason, likes to trap a bunch of particulates, and sometimes that leads to nuisance algae growth. So whenever possible, hit them with a ton of flow. One of the criteria that puts corals like green star polyps on this list might be a little controversial. And that criteria is, I kind of give a little bit of extra credit to corals that encrust. So I get it. Some hobbyists don't necessarily like having corals encrust on the bottom of the tank. But I do. And let me explain this. I think that there's something cool about having the entire bottom of a tank covered by different colored corals. But as a practical matter, guys, something is going to be growing on the bottom of a bare bottom tank. Worst case scenario, it's going to be piles of detritus and nuisance algae. Slightly better would be a sheet of coralline algae, unless of course you want that ultra clean bottom skating rink look, which is gonna require weekly scraping to keep clean. So I prefer the option of growing encrusting coral on the glass because I think it works better aesthetically and it's lower maintenance. All right, let's move on. That was number two, the green star polyp. The number one coral on this list is Leptoceris. Leptoceris is an encrusting stony coral that is becoming more widespread in the industry. When they originally hit the scene, they were fetching, frankly, a king's ransom for a small frag. But they're being more readily propagated by both hobbyists and coral farmers, so that price tag came down considerably since then. What is particularly nice about Leptoceris is the fact that it fluoresces brightly in actinic light. Oftentimes, some of the more exotic colors, like blue and yellow, don't really fluoresce, but in Leptoceris, they do. Originally, they used to only come in a few different shades of orange, but now there's all kinds of different color morphs popping up, such as bright greens, that flamingo pink, and my personal favorite, a bright yellow morph called a 24K. As far as their suitability in a bare bottom tank, they have the best of all worlds. They are a fast growing encrusting coral, so they can be used to form a solid sheet on the bottom of the aquarium. They're also not the most light demanding coral out there. And lastly, they can take a lot of flow to keep them clean from settling detritus. One of these days, I could see myself growing several different color variants on the bottom of a tank together. But alternatively, if I had a few different tanks, you could kind of color code each of them with a different Leptoceris. There's tons of creative options available. Okay, that pretty much does it for my top five corals to keep on the glass bottom. So what did you think of the list? Did I forget your favorite coral? If I did, leave a comment below. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you'd like more information on all these corals, or perhaps purchase a few for your home aquarium, I invite you to visit us at TitleGardens.com and see what we have going on. That does it for this video, so until next time, happy reefing.